Welcome to another week of overview lessons. This week, we're going over lessons 33 through 36. So how'd your week go? There was quite a bit going on last week. You had the big activity of building the numbers one through 10 with the tally sticks. You had the assessment. I hope that went well. Again, like I said, don't be too discouraged if it didn't go as well as you hoped. We still have lots of lessons left and lots of time to work on these concepts. Before we get started on this week's lessons, let's see what materials you're gonna need. You are going to need the abacus, the child's worksheets, the part whole circle set. This is new. This is something you'll find in the appendix. We'll talk more about that when we get to the lesson. Your tiles, the math card game book with the basic number deck. This is also new. It's the swim to 10 game. It's something you could go to the back of the math card game book and make a copy of. And then uh, some of the centimeter cubes, what you need are some game pieces for this game. You should have the centimeter cubes. Those work well, but if you have other individual game pieces you'd rather use instead, go, you can get those and use those also. The dry erase board, the place value cards, and then you'll need some scissors and some glue. Lesson 33 is the part whole circle set. This is fun, I like these. This is the part whole circle set that came in your uh, appendix sheet. I have mine in a page protector. You just slide it on in and then you can use your dry erase markers to write on this. The kids, all the kids I ever have and have done right start with love to use their dry erase markers. And I know you have the dry erase marker board but I find that putting the, I even make copies. I'll make copies of this sheet and so I'll have two or three in page protectors. Now, one of the reasons that Right Start does use this is because it shows research, research has shown that children do better with solving problems by using this part whole circle set. And you'll see on the second page, it has you use tiles. And it wants you to partition using the part whole circle set. So you're going to put the amount of tiles in the hole because that's all there are. And then they will partition it. So you have other, so you're going to have one set of tiles in the top part. Then you're going to have that same number of tiles, the second set. And then the child is going to take those, that second set, and Oh my gosh, I think I'm just going to show you, see it's easier. So here's our part whole circle set. And I'm going to do an example that's in the book. And I think I'll just do four. Make it easier. So here's our hole. And now the child has four more tiles. And they have to take these tiles and put them in the parts. How can we give parts that will equal the whole? Some children are going to get this pretty quick and they're gonna see that they could put two in one and two in the other. Some children may not get that quick. So what you could do is you can put one in and ask them, well, if I have one in this part, how many more parts do I need? And if need be, you can even kind of separate this a little bit. Here's my one part. What do I need? How many more parts do I need? And hopefully they're gonna see that you're gonna need three. This is also something you can use candy in place of the tiles if you don't mind having your children eat some sugar during the day. <laughs> uh, candy seemed to motivate my children. And so, and it made it a little bit fun. I like using the part whole circle set. And this will really help your children understand story problems too. And we'll, you'll be using this throughout Right Start, even when we get into multiplication and division. Notice at the bottom, we 
it ends with two games. Both of these games are found in the math card game book. The games are focusing on helping the child see the numbers in sequential order. And it's a, they're, they're fun games. So a lot of it is with, you know, either you mixing up the cards and your child having to figure out which numbers are messed up or your child can mix up the cards and then you have to figure out and maybe you don't figure it out correctly just to test them to see if they really know. Lesson 34 is partitioning problems. So more work with partitioning. So I tell you, don't get too upset if one of the lessons your child struggles with because we're gonna be doing more in those areas. And then again, the warm ups are review. Remember, if your child knows it and they're very confident in it, you don't always have to do those reviews. When you get to the partitioning problems, and it says this in the explanations, but I just want to also say, change the story problems to use names that your children are familiar with or you know, activities that your children are familiar with. It just makes it a little bit more enjoyable for your child. They think it's fun versus you know, sharing a story problem with people that you don't know or activities that you're not familiar with. So the games at the end of this lesson are a little bit more challenging. Play them, or at least try playing them and see how your child does. If they still struggle a little bit, then go back and play one of the easier games until they get more confident and comfortable with these games. The in conclusion is asking a question. Now remember, we talked about this earlier, but in case you forget, the in conclusion usually will just highlight something that was learned in the lesson, or it might have a question to really get a child to have to think a little bit beyond what they've been taught. So we're learning and we're partitioning numbers and we're kind of focusing on five, but then look at what they're asking in the conclusion. It's a different number. And yes, they did that yesterday, but are they gonna remember it today? So encourage your child to, to use what they have learned to answer these questions if they forget what they did in the lesson yesterday. And also know that this is also going to be covered in the next lesson. Lesson 35. As you see, we're going to work again with the part whole circle sets. Notice in this lesson where we're into partitioning four, it's asking for the child to draw the part whole circle set on their marker board. Some children will enjoy doing that, others may not. I personally would just rather use this and why I have it in a page protector. One, it is just handy. Two, I don't have to worry about if I draw the circles and then when I'm moving my arm around, I end up erasing part of those circles. So it's, it's really up to you. If you wanna draw them, fine. If you wanna use a page protector with this, that's fine too. On the second page in the explanations, it talks about how when you first start solving problems using the part whole circle set, it can be a little bit challenging. So you may want or you may need to model this to your student first. So let's go through an example because the thing is you don't wanna tell them what they need to do. You wanna lead them through, ask questions to get them to figure out what they need to do. Okay, so here's an example. Kaysen has six pennies and he found two more. How many pennies does Kaysen have now? So we want to know, do we put these numbers in the part or do they go into the whole? Some children will know that they go into the part. Some children may not. So then you can repeat. So, okay, I want you to listen now. Kaysen has six pennies and he finds two more. How many does he have now? So would six be a part or a whole? Because is that all that he has? Was six, so is six all that he has? And if the child says yes, say, well, that's what he had, but then he found two more. 
So now we want to know what he has all now with the six and the two. So would that be the six be a part or a whole? And hopefully they're going to understand that it's a part. Now, let's say they still struggle. This is where I would get out some tiles as an example, or maybe we're working with pennies. You can have some real pennies. But I would say, all right, Kaysen has six pennies. We'll pretend these are pennies. And he finds two more. So is this, are these parts? Or is it the whole? Now, if we put it together, we know it's the whole, but for a child, we need them to figure out first, is it a part or a whole? So if they need to, they may have to see it and see, oh, this is a part, this is a part, together they make the whole. There's a game in here at the bottom called Swim to 10. It's Appendix 7. This is what it looks like. In the uh, materials that I showed you, it was a really pretty colors, green and yellow. He printed out, it's just a real basic black and white, but it's okay, it still works. You wanna print this out or you just use this, you just open it up and you can do, use it as is. And then I mentioned having the centimeter cubes. So you can use the centimeter cubes as your game pieces, or maybe you have some game pieces at your house that you can use in place of it and you could always put a little sticker or something on one of them to show they're different. It's a fun game working with numbers one to ten and you have to have the exact number to be able to get to the end to be the winner. If you have land on the x you have to go back to start and then you can go again you keep going but the person who gets to the end wins. Last lesson for the week lesson 36 ones and finding and reading tens. We're slowly introducing place value. Look at the explanations to the right on that first page. And I'm going to read that first part because it's so important. Place value is the single most important concept in arithmetic. I will tell you I get so many calls and people upset because their children don't have their multiplication memorized. Let me tell you that this concept of place value is even more important. Without place value, without place value, arithmetic cannot be understood. It is that important. And I think Right Start does a phenomenal job at teaching place value. So you're gonna be using the place value cards in this lesson. You're gonna be using the ones and the tens. So just get those out. You'll have your child enter two tens into the abacus. And then you're gonna find the place value card that goes with it. And we want to emphasize as we're saying this as two, 10, two, 10, 100, 10, 10. Have you ever thought about 100 as 10, 10? So you can see the different activities you're going to do to help your child learn to recognize the different amounts, whether it's four or four, 10, three or three, 10. And then make note in the can you find game, no abacus on this game. So it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge for some of those children but try it, encourage them. So the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna build a hundred triangle. This is a little different. In lesson 26, you, your child built the triangle with the 10 pieces in it, but this time it's a little different. And the worksheet has the triangles that you need to cut out and they're easy to see. Again, you could make a copy if you want, just in case they mess up cutting out the triangles. But, you know, some tape can fix that. These are a lot easier to see what needs to be cut out. So look in your lesson book at the 10, 10 triangles from the 100 triangle. So they're going to cut out 10 triangles that have 10 triangles on the card. Then they're going to glue them to the bigger triangle. And this just gives them a better visual 
of how many tens it takes to make a hundred. We're done for the week. Oh, that's a lot, isn't it? Lots of good, fun, interesting things we're going to be doing this week. I look forward to hearing from you if you get a chance. How are the lessons going? Are you feeling more comfortable with them? Are your children doing well? Are they struggling? Let us know. I look forward to joining you next week as we go over lessons 37 to 40. Until then.